This is a technique paper for establishing dual posterior medial portals in complex arthroscopy of the posterior knee. Here are our disclosures. Pathology in the posterior knee and the ability to adequately diagnose and treat conditions in this area can be challenging and pose significant risk to patients. Arthroscopy in the posterior compartments continues to improve as new techniques are developed, but there are some limitations to these established procedures. Here, we describe the technique for establishing dual posterior medial portals for complex arthroscopy in the posterior knee, and specifically in relation to a case of a posterior knee mass biopsy and resection. However, other applications include arthroscopic synovectomy, loose body removal, accessory portals during PCL reconstruction, meniscal root repairs, posterior horn repairs, and ramp lesion repairs. First, a standard diagnostic arthroscopy is carried out with the anterior medial and anterior lateral portals established at 90 degrees of flexion. Once the surgeon is ready to proceed to access the posterior compartments, a modified Gilchrist maneuver is performed, passing between the medial femoral condyle and the medial border of the PCL, which can be seen in the left-hand picture. And subsequently, the posterior compartments of the knee can be visualized as seen in the right-hand picture. We then establish two posterior medial portals by performing identification of superficial landmarks and then by direct visualization. Attention is turned to the superficial aspect of the medial knee where the incisions will be made. A soft spot located between the femoral condyle and the proximal tibia is palpated about one centimeter posterior to the edge of the joint line. The soft spot is formed by the medial head of the gastrocnemius, the MCL, and the semimembranosus. A line is drawn in line with the posterior edge of the long axis of the femur, centered over the soft spot, and the two portal locations will be created around the soft spot. The first portal is marked one centimeter posterior and one centimeter proximal to the center of the soft spot to create a large enough skin bridge. The second portal is drawn just anterior and distal to that line that has been drawn. Above, you see the medial side of the knee with skin markings. The joint line is marked by the larger dotted line and the medial upper condyle is marked with a small circle. The line parallel to the posterior edge of the femur is marked with the smaller dotted line, and the blue arrow indicates the posterior and proximal portal, while the red arrow indicates the anterior and distal portal. Starting with the proximal and posterior portal, an 18-gauge spinal needle is inserted under direct visualization with the scope from the anterior lateral portal as seen here. An 11 blade knife was used to make stab incisions at these locations, penetrating the capsule, and a snap was inserted and used to spread the soft tissue. Then, as you can see here, a twisting cannula is inserted to maintain access of the joint. The steps are then repeated with a second, more anterior and distal portal, and a second cannula was inserted. As seen in the figure in the upper left, the arthroscope can then be inserted through either portal for viewing of the posterior compartments of the knee from the posterior medial aspect. One serves as a viewing portal, while the second serves as a working portal. These are interchangeable depending on location of pathology and allow for use of a variety of instrumentation. In our case, we did a biopsy and resection of the soft tissue mass in the posterior knee as noted in the figure on the bottom. The two posterior medial portals allow for visualization and usage of the werewolf fibrillation wand to adequately resect the mass as seen above. These portals help provide direct line of sight to the mass and a more complete resection. Thank you for your time.